Hey guys, welcome to Bambi TV. Guys, we're going to be checking out TV level of fasting, which most Muslims don't know about. So guys, let's get straight into this. Put in your eyes from her. This woman has been lying and putting out her about his empty. Pray that inshallah ta'ala you'll continue to stay engaged and that you'll make dua uh, for our success and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you successful in preparing for Ramadan. Allahumma balighna Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to live to see Ramadan and accept our deeds in Ramadan and beyond. Uh, inshallah ta'ala to, tonight though what I want to do is actually connect the subject of fasting to the Friday khutbah. So the last few khutbahs have been about our thoughts how we think of others, how we think of ourselves, and how we think in ourselves, and the idea of occupying our thoughts. And subhanAllah, as I was you know, reviewing some of the material about Ramadan prep, um, I came across one of my favorite uh, uh, portions of the chapter of fasting from an Imam al-Ghazali rahimahullah ta'ala, where he talks about the three degrees of fasting. And it is so directly tied to the Friday khutbah that I couldn't help but bring it in now inshallah ta'ala and talk about what this means in regards to our thoughts. He said that you should know that fasting is of three levels and he describes them as the following. He says there's Salm al-Umum which is the general fasting, the fasting of the masses if you will, the most basic level of fasting and then he says there's Salm al-Khusus there is the special fasting meaning it is a select group of people that undertake this level of fasting. And then there is Salm Khusus al Khusus. There is the fasting of the special of the special, meaning a small group from amongst an already small group of righteous people. And so that is the highest level of fasting. So he says, as for Salm al Umum, as for the general fasting, the most basic level of fasting, فَهُوَ كَفُّ الْبَطْنِ وَالْفَرْجِ عَنْ قَضَاءِ الشَّهْوَةِ He says that it is to restrain the stomach and the private parts from all of their desires. And what that means is that obviously when we fast, the most basic level of fasting is the physical fasting where we reduce or we restrain ourselves rather fully from food and from intimacy. So he says that that is the most basic level of fasting, the restraint of the stomach and the restraint of the private parts from uh, their desires being food, uh, and of course, drink and intimacy. And then he says, وَأَمَّا صَوْمُ الْخُصُوصِ He says, as for the second level, which is the, the special fasting, that is the fasting of the righteous. So this is the fasting of الصَّالِحِينَ. He says, فَهُوَ كَفُّ السَّمْعِ وَالْبَصَرِ وَالْلِسَانِ وَالْيَدِ وَالْرِجْلِ وَسَائِرِ الْجَوَارِحِ عَنِ الْآثَامِ that it is to restrain a person's hearing, to restrain their sight, to restrain their tongue, to restrain their hands, to restrain their feet, and to restrain all of their body parts from that which is displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are the people that realize the goal of Siyam, the goal of fasting. Kutiba alaykum al-Siyamu kama kutiba ala ladina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. Fasting has been prescribed upon you as it was prescribed on those that came before you so that you may gain taqwa. You become mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, pious, and that causes you to abandon that which brings about his displeasure. So tark al ma'asi, to abandon sins. So this is the second degree of fasting. And of course, we know that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that whoever does not leave off false speech, foul speech, and acting upon that, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in need of them leaving off their food and their drink and their intimacy, right? So this is where we strive to be, to have our fasting accepted in the spiritual sense and to realize the goal of Ramadan, the goal of fasting, to not use the faculties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us in a way that is displeasing to him, to obviously learn through abstaining from the permissible how to wholly abstain from the prohibited. But then there's the third level, and this is what ties to the Jum'ah khutbah, where he mentions Salm khusus al khusus. He mentions the fasting of the select of the select, the special of the special. 
a small group of people. And he mentions that this is the fasting of the heart from lowly thoughts, from lowly feelings, and the fasting of the person from thoughts of this world and leaving off that which does not which is not directly tied to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So leaving off the thoughts that are not tied to Allah in the fullest sense. So it is leaving off worldly thoughts and leaving off worldly concerns and occupying your thoughts with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fasting of the thoughts. And this is the fasting of ihsan. This is the fasting of excellence. To give you an idea, when we talk about salah, when we talk about prayer, the emphasis when you're talking about khushur, when you're talking about achieving humility in prayer is removing distractions, right? You know, people strive to get to a place where they're not thinking about other things when they're in prayer, when they are attentive to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in prayer. So it's removing those thoughts and trying to perfect your salah in that sense, guarding your prayer, guarding the external uh, elements of your prayer and guarding the internal elements of your prayer, guarding your thoughts in prayer, guarding your heart in prayer. But then the third level or the equivalent of the third level of fasting here in regards to prayer is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Arihna Biha Ya Bilal, comfort us with it, O Bilal, where he looked forward to the prayer, where prayer was his relief from this world, where he enjoyed his prayer, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that's certainly where we should strive to be as well. And that is Ihsan, that's excellence, right? That's worshiping Allah as if you can see him. And this is uh, particularly important, subhanAllah, when we're talking about you know, the thoughts, and we're talking about the greatest goal here is to conquer your thoughts. Because if you conquer your thoughts, then you will not allow bad thoughts, negative thoughts to, you know, uh, to, to, to become uh, negative actions and then to become negative habits, right? So if you conquer your thoughts and occupy them with good things, then that allows you to move to the next level with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you are thinking of Allah more, you are feeling, right? In, 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 the, in the spiritual sense, you are feeling that which brings you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more. And you are habitually doing those things that are pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala naturally. And you find the purification of your intentions to be seamless because that pure intention is arising out of pure thoughts and arising out of a steady connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We also find subhanAllah where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam you know, gives us this, uh, this dua, وَلَا تَجْعَلْ مُصْلِيبَتَنَا فِي دِينِنَا Do not make our tragedy in regards to our deen, in regards to our religion. وَلَا تَجْعَلِ الدُّنْيَا أَكْبَرَ هَمِّنَا And do not make this world our greatest concern. وَلَا مَبْلَغَ عِلْمِنَا And do not make us that all that we know about. So do not make all of our knowledge just worldly knowledge. And of course not to place upon us. وَلَا تُسَلِّطْ عَلَيْنَا مَنْ لَا يَرْحَمُنَا And do not place on top of us or place in charge of us those who do not show us mercy. Do not put us at the mercy of oppressors and those that are cruel. So, وَلَا تَجْعَلِ الدُّنْيَا أَكْبَرَ هَمِّنَا Right? Do not let the world become our greatest concern. Don't let our thoughts always be surrounding this world. Do not let that which preoccupies our thoughts be worldly. So, worldly is not even necessarily sinful, but you want to get to a point where you are thinking more about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're thinking more about the hereafter. And so, your concerns surround that which transcends this dunya and the barriers of this dunya, the barriers of this world. And so as your concern surrounds that, then your actions, your deeds that are meant to be pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are fully pointed in that direction. And you are, you're occupying your thoughts with that, right? And so that is a clear connection between one of the goals of fasting and one of the goals of life, right? Is, is to conquer those thoughts early on, as we said, before they even become afkar, before they become settled thoughts, to even conquer our uh, our passing thoughts, right? To not let our passing thoughts become settled thoughts when they are sinful and they take us away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, you know, of course, I'd liken this to a person that uh, has an important exam ahead of them or has an important engagement ahead of them, right? They're thinking about that. That is what is occupying them. 
And if you think about when the Prophet ﷺ would wake people up for Qiyamul Layl or when the Prophet ﷺ would uh, encourage people to do good, what would he impress upon them? The urgency of the hereafter, the urgency of the hereafter. Hayya ala salah, hayya ala falah. Come to the prayer, come to true success. So we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to achieve the fasting of the stomach and the fasting of the private parts and the fasting of all of the limbs and the fasting of our thoughts this Ramadan and that that becomes something that we can then carry with us bidnillahi ta'ala as a regimen in life inshallah ta'ala. So jazakumullah khairan. I look forward to the next few weeks with you inshallah ta'ala getting ready for Ramadan and inshallah ta'ala I pray that uh, we reach Ramadan and that Allah accept it from us and that we are forgiven uh, through it and that our stations are raised in his sight subhanahu wa ta'ala and that we are brought together in his pleasure in this life and the next. Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum. Guys, this is beautiful. I love when he talks about when you are focusing on your isms. Like, I'm actually focusing on my isms that I'm going to be releasing content later. But I feel this is actually amazing. Is I, w- I don't say, I don't feel this is just subjected to Islam, but I feel subjected to all religion. If you want to take his advice, because his advice actually make a lot of sense. Because if you think of it, when you're fasting, you have to have a holy thought. Like your thought is supposed to be, like you would think thoughts are that of God. And that kind of thing that when you pray and some thoughts comes and it, it happens to me once in a while. And I try to, try my best to like stop, pray against it. Let's start again because it's. I would say it's crazy because sometimes you, your mind just move like drift from where it's supposed to go, and you being aware and be able to correct it is actually an amazing thing. But with that Ramadan is almost over because I asked my friend, it was like, "The almost over Ramadan." But guys, we're posting this song. Guys, don't forget to like, share, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time, guys. First.